Today, we're going to talk about why your marketing is ineffective. First of all, I want you to understand that there's something called a total addressable market. That is 100% of people that could buy your products or services or your solution. Like if they got a problem, they need to fix it. So what do they do? They buy a solution. If you have a oil change problem, you know, in your car, the oil's old or whatever it is, you rode more than 3,000 miles or 10,000 miles, depending on your car, you need to replace your oil or it could be detrimental to your engine. The same exact thing matters in business, right? So what I want to show you is that not everybody is in the market for your products or services right now. Not everybody should you try to sell to, right? So as a marketing entrepreneur for the last 20 years, we help so many people grow and scale. But the way that we help them grow and scale is actually not by trying to sell to everything for everyone, is to sell to those people that are in demand for your products and services. So if you look at it, it kind of starts from the bottom up. There's people that are unaware of your products or service. They have no idea that you even exist or that they even have a problem, right? They don't even know. There's people that know that they have a problem. They have some itch, right? Like some kind of itch, but they don't really know what to do with it. It could be a problem with their health, could be a problem with your, your business services that you offer, whatever that problem is. Um, they know that they have a problem. They haven't spent enough time researching the solution. Then there's people that are like, hey, I know there is a solution. I am solution aware, but I don't know who I'm going to work with specifically. And then there's like people that found you as a business and they're considering you uh, as one of the options versus all these other companies that might offer the same services. That's getting warmer. That's a really good place to be. And then obviously the people that are ready to make a decision right now. So think about this, understanding the demand pyramid, who would you go after right now with your limited budget and limited time, limited resources? Would you go and try to convince the people that are unaware they have a problem, they have some problem awareness, they're watching some commercial, they're like, oh yeah, I have that problem, or they learn some, you know, on a blog post or a social media post, they're solution aware, they're like, yeah, I know that if you wanna build a trust or this and that for your company, uh, for your personal wealth, like, oh, you can go get that, but they haven't done any research to finding the solution. We work with a lot of B2B businesses. This is so true in B2B as it is in B2C. A lot of B2B organizations actually work harder on trying to convince people that aren't even ready to buy than the people that are ready to you know ready to actually make buying decisions so what we say in our growth formula which is acquisition plus retention is that the biggest things that we try to do when our customers come and say hey we need cash right now in the next quarter we're trying to make money in the next quarter or the next six months what we try to do is we look at where their money is spent in terms of marketing and lead generation and customer acquisition. We divert most of their funds to the 3%. And that is people that are in market, ready to make buying decisions or ready to have a proposal, ready to talk to a salesperson. Those are the 3% that we go to. So how do we do that? We literally spend hours and hours looking at what they're doing. Where's their money being spent? Where are the leads going? And then we say, look, are we capturing demand with this investment or are we trying to create demand, which is everything here. The lower, you know, three quarters of this is trying to create demand. This is like social media posts, right? Trying to create social media posts is not going to get you a sale tomorrow. And a lot of people say that, well, for marketing to work, you know, got to give it some time. Uh, you know, six months, 12 months. You know why? Because all those activities are following this, right? This is like trying to convince somebody who has no idea they have a problem to let them know there is a problem and then let them know there is a solution and then get them to consider you. That is really, really hard work. But what I can do is when they search for your product, when they search for your solution, a some type of specific medical doctor near me or a specific product or service that you offer. Maybe you are a CRM company or a CRM integration company. Maybe you're an IT services company. Maybe you're a manufacturing company. Whatever that thing that you know your company solves, are you showing up on top of Google? In the exact same way, when they go to YouTube, do you get found? Because what they do is they search. They're like, hey, I want to go buy this thing. Who sells this? Or they found a company that already sells it, 
but they want to shop the price. I mean, don't tell me you've never done that, right? Like they want to shop the price. They want to look for another vendor. So what do they do? Keywords like alternatives to X, alternative to X. Literally, that is the keyword that we use in our company to make sure that our customers show up for their competition. When we work with a customer, we, do, we go through this entire process of building what's called a blueprint. And that means it's us understanding precisely what you've been doing and what results it provided for you. Typically, when we do that process, we come to find out that 80% of the budget that is literally being invested into their marketing is down here. That is trying to create awareness. Well, we look at that and say, well, 80% of your money is going to places that you think are going to give you results, but like, hey, we want to be community driven. We want to help these organizations. We're part of this industry uh, association. So we got to do all this. Fantastic. Look at the demand pyramid. You tell me where these people are on the demand pyramid. You're trying to convince somebody to get baptized, but they don't even know what it is that they're doing, right? So what we do is we take that same 80% of that budget, we invest it into the 20% that drives 80% of the result. That's right. We take 80% of that budget that has been going to waste. And the only thing that's been working for them is a couple of lead generation SEO or something that they may have done. And they're getting some leads from maybe some referrals, a couple of hot sources have been feeding them in terms of new leads and sales and pipeline. And when we deploy 80% of their ineffective marketing, guess what happens to their business? right? So understanding that concept is what I want you to take away from this, uh, this exact, uh, you know, this training is to understand like, Hey, most of your budget may be not delivering the results that you're it's supposed to give you. So what we want to do is actually the growth formula, which I'll, sh I'll put it up on the screen here so you can see it is to capture demand first. That's our first thing is to capture demand. And then the second thing is to go and create demand. It's not that we never create content, to get people to know us uh, six months from now, a year from now, two years from now, when the need arise, we actually just don't spend all of our money there right now, right? Anything below that, which is blogs, which is long form content, short form content, email marketing systems that we need to automate all of this stuff and also planning what kind of content we're going to create in the future, digital PR branding activities. All of that goes over here. If you're a CEO, you're a marketing executive, you're a VP and you're like, Solomon, I love everything you said. I want to dive deeper. I want to show you what we're doing. I want you to do a deep dive, uh, you know, because we're investing into all of these things and maybe it's not driving the results that you're looking for. Well, I got great news for you. Um, we go through this process of understanding whether or not we're the right fit for you and you're the right fit for us. So there's a link right below this video to schedule a call with one of our strategists. We're so fortunate that we've learned all the ins and outs of what it takes to grow and scale a pipeline. So if you want to have a chat, there's a link right below this. Or if you want to just watch more videos to educate yourself, you're welcome to do that as well. Consider subscribing to this channel. I'll see you on the next Full Funnel Friday.